Hey guys, welcome to History Gaming Verified and today we're going to take a look at the single player campaign of Call of Duty World War 2. Right at the start, COD smacks us in the face with something anybody educated on Panzers might find quite a bit immersion breaking. As you can see on the left side, they are showing Panzer Force parading through a ruined French city alongside German infantry brandishing swastika standards. Well, first, the Wehrmacht did not parade like this. Brandishing loads of standards with swastikas and secondly, I wasn't able to find any footage or photos of SS units doing it in France. Though the inspiration might come from a famous picture taken during the NSDAP party day in Nuremberg in 1933. It might be a nice dramatic effect, but in my eyes it was quite unnecessary. On top of this, the Panzer IVs on the left are seemingly of the type F2 or G, armed with a long 7.5cm cannon. And when the camera veers around, you also see some Panzer IV H or J. All these variants were introduced from 1942 and onwards. Not so nice. So it's just nonsense to show them in France during the so-called Blitzkrieg of 1940. And the funny thing is, there is actually a Panzer 3 or 4 with a short barreled cannon at the bottom of the screen here. And the question is, why didn't the developers simply use the model they had available for this scene, but instead opted to take the long barreled version? Strange. Now for something COD World War II actually gets right. Shortly thereafter the infamous landing at Omaha Beach is shown. And after the barbed wire barricade is blown up, you get to shoot your first enemies. And they drop, among others, the PP Shah 41, a Soviet SMG. This is historically correct. The Wehrmacht captured loads of these in 1941 and 1942, using them converted to 9mm parabellum as MP41R and unconverted as MP717R. Though there is a minor mistake, the magazine used is the original Soviet box magazine introduced in February 1942. The Germans mainly used the drum mag or the MP40 mag for the converted ones. Later you encounter more enemies with other captured equipment, what nicely displays the dire need for weapons the Wehrmacht had throughout and even before the war. Next up we have the liberation of Paris, yeah! Though you are not really liberating Paris. The mission starts during the night of August 25, 1944. And at this point the Germans had already lost control of approximately 75% of Paris, including the city hall. Intense fighting between the Resistance and German occupation forces had erupted all over the city and a small tank column from the 2nd French Armored Division had already joined the fight for Paris, assaulting the last German positions in the city. So the ear required during the first phase of the mission is utterly wrong. All over Paris and especially in the location you are at, heavy fighting was going on. This infiltration mission actually would have made more sense if it had started only a few days earlier, and not at the garrison, but the city hall. By the way, the first allied unit entering Paris consisted mostly of Spanish volunteers from the Spanish Civil War, not French soldiers. Alright, let's take a look at the next point on my list. Just to remind you, the intention of the series is to show how realistic a game depicts history. And Call of Duty World War II sadly is quite bad at this. The mission Collateral Damage is set during the Battle of Aachen or Aachen. While the fierce fighting in the streets is quite accurate, the tank battle is not. Not so much for the waves of Panzer Shrek armed Germans hitting your tank and doing only superficial damage, but for the fight against the German Panzers. Your tank is obviously a Sherman, and why I'm not sure if it is an M4A1, A2 or A3 it definitely is armed with the 76mm gun M1, capable of penetrating up to 93mm of armor at a 30 degree angle. This means it should be able to penetrate the front of any Panzer IV variant with ease. And despite this you are not able to destroy the Panzer IVs you encounter 
with shots through their frontal plate, so instead of Panzer IVs, maybe Panthers would have been more fitting. Notwithstanding that in the ruined streets of a bombed out city, such frantic maneuvering would be almost impossible without losing your tracks. This point is something for the warplane enthusiasts. In the mission Battle of the Bulge, set during the Ardennes Offensive, you call in air support. Problem is, the piece of 47 Thunderbolts that should help you are busy escorting B-17 bombers. Despite that, they are fully loaded with bombs and rockets. These would produce far more drag, making the planes less maneuverable in aerial combat and increase their fuel consumption to the point where they would not be able to escort the bombers back. So nobody would do that. War Thunder players might relate at this point. While one could argue these things under the wings look like external fuel tanks, the stabilizer fins tell us otherwise. This part of the game sadly makes no sense at all. Escorting ground attack squadrons would be far more realistic. And finally, the Ludendorff Bridge, also known as the Bridge at Rehmann. Your mission is to capture this vital passage over the Rhine intact, but it is fiercely defended. Well, in reality, the situation was far better for the US forces. They had plenty of armor support, even some M26 Pershing, the most well-armored and armed US tank of the war. And though the German defenders fired from MG emplacements in the towers on the western side, the soldiers of the 9th Armored Division captured these rather quickly and then continued to cross the bridge. The attempt to blow it up failed because the Germans only had half the explosive they needed and it wasn't military grade on top of that, instead they had mining explosives. The US tanks suppressed the remaining defenders on the eastern side while the first squad of the 9th Armored reached the end of the bridge and secured it without taking any losses at all. They had run across the whole bridge through the enemy fire, only stopping during the explosion and then using the smoke and dust of it to push on, completely unopposed. This means the pitch battle for the eastern side is mostly fictional. The Stuka attack during the battle for the bridge and the short sequence where you shoot them down with a captured German 3.7cm flag on SDKFZ6-2 is, sorry for the strong language, plain bullshit. I get the point of the developers though, it was a crucial point of the Allied campaign and otherwise this final mission possibly would have been rather boring. So it's understandable. Also, there are a lot more minor errors on top of these, especially regarding availability of certain weapons, their technical details, how they are used, how they are loaded, and how they are fired. Let's summarize. Some details show well done research, for example weapon marks and the amount of historical equipment in game. Though this is somewhat devalued by unnecessary ahistorical exaggerated symbolism, like in the intro, timeline breaks, for example the Panzer Force in the intro, multiple technical errors like wrongly loading and feeding weapons, and overhyping enemies and fighting like the battle for the Ludendorff Bridge or the armor of enemy tanks. To make matters short, Call of Duty World War II uses the Second World War as background but does not depict it very well or accurate. While some changes to the historical facts make sense from a narrative or gameplay point of view, they often break the immersion and are sometimes simply redundant or showing neglect. In my eyes, the single player campaign of the game is not commemorating the deeds of the US forces and the allies in the second world war the way it could and should have done. And the game often left me bitterly disappointed or without immersion at its most climatic points. Not good and not approved. I would like to thank Militaries Revisualized for his continuous support and Justin Pike from Twitter for his insight on native speaking and the right naming for this channel. Thanks a lot to you guys. Now, if you want to know how to fire an MG34 from the hip, take a look here. And if you are curious why there were no MG42s in German tanks, try this one. All the best and see you on the next video.